So there's some excellent cash flow modeling tools out there on the marketplace, uh, FE Cash Count, Voyant, and Timeline, and then they're very, very good. Uh, but typically, you would have to go via an advisor to access those, and uh, all they're very, very expensive in terms of the retail director client versions. You can create something in terms of cash flow model, an income retirement plan on Excel, and it will be very, very robust. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video today. We're literally just going to build that plan. It's going to be a retirement income model. So we'll see some accumulation stage and then the decumulation stage as well. So it's really about um, looking at the assets um, you've got, looking at the income streams that are coming in, and then understanding the likely sustainability of those. Um, added to that, we'll also do some stress testing of that as well. So we'll look at what is the impact of certain market events um, over the course of that retirement. In addition, we'll get a good understanding of what capacity for losses as well. So really that's the, the, the minimum level um, starting point of what your pot would need to be to be able to meet effectively an objective at a certain um, point in time in the future. So hopefully it should be really, really useful. It is gonna be really all about getting the, the boxes in the right place, the formula in the right place, but effectively once it's built, you can come back and just adapt and amend those. But it's just really crucial, just getting the formula right. But I'll go through it. You can obviously stop, pause, rewind, look at it in terms of what's going on. Um, and hopefully it should should make sense, but I'll go through it relatively slowly so you'll get a good understanding of, of what's happening in each cell. But anyway, we'll jump into Excel and we'll, we'll start building that now. But first of all, we don't want to put anything in this first box up here, A1, because that'll affect the charts and, and graphs that we'll be producing later. So we go straight to A2 where we've put in, we're going to put in the ages, so we're going to run our ages down consecutively. So we're going to be we're working with Mr. Pickles. Let's say he's age 60. Uh, right now and then we'll just run that down as we can do with excel and hopefully you're aware of this you can just pull that down to and we'll take it to let's take it to age let's say he's gonna go let's go 99 that'll give us a good uh, decent model and and then we know if he's age 60 so let's first start off with uh, sort of a key key part of anyone's um, income uh, for most people will be their state pension. So let's start off with that for Miss Pickles. If he's age 60 now, then state pension will be payable to him at age 67. And currently that's 11,500, but clearly um, by age 67, the state pension should be, for all intents and purposes, be higher than that. We know it increases by the triple lock. So it's a minimum of two and a half percent a year. So we need to work out what will this figure be a future value of this 11,500 pounds would be at age 67. So what we need to do is use this rather natty little formula up here. Now, you don't need to put this in, but it just helps a, a nice little reference point. So let's build this out. We've got our state pension, which we know will be, uh, it's currently 11,500 pounds per year. Let's just make that look a bit nicer by making it currency, two decimal points places and so we've got our rate of return which we know will be 2.5 percent per year and we've got our number of years so the number of years is effectively when the income will actually uh, start to be paid and that's seven years in the future and the state pension at start therefore will be the calculation that we'll use above. So this is really nice and straightforward. You obviously, uh, we need to our equals in there. So we know our present value, which is 11,500 pounds there. We need to times that, which is the asterisk on the keyboard. So that's number eight and then uppercase asterisk. And so we're gonna do, then we need to times that by one. So um, open brackets, one plus the rate of return, which is 2.5% there, close brackets, and then we've got our uh, to the power of, which is on the keyboard number six, and then again uppercase, so that's to the power of, and then our number of years, which is very, very simple, which is obviously the n, the number of years in the equation there, so that's that one below there, so number of years, seven. So, uh, in seven years' time, that £11,500 will actually be 13,600. So we just grab that like so, and it pops it in there for us, which is fantastic. So we know we are on that front. Let's just, um, we'll just zero these out because we don't have any state pension there. 
And then we can just drag this down. So we're gonna drag it down by two and a half percent per year. So we just need to do, again, a very, very similar um, calculation. Grab that number above us there. And we're gonna go times, open brackets, one, plus our rate of return, which will be 2.5% a year if it's going up by the minimum level of the triple lock. Uh, close brackets, um, and that will give us 2.5% on 13,669 uh, will be 14,011. But what we can't do, unfortunately, with uh, Excel, it's not smart enough to be able to drag that down because the number goes absolutely wacky because it pulls rather than using 2.5%, which it should be using, it goes down to the next cell. So what we have to do is, if we get rid of that and go back to this cell, we need to put in a uh, dollar sign each side of that letter. A bit strange. So it should be uh, number four on the keyboard, uppercase, so it's your dollar sign, so in between that letter, so you've got dollar sign, letter, dollar sign, and then Bosch. There we go. So when we drag this down, this should pull through the 2.5%. We'll drag that all the way down to 99. So as you can see in those later years, how significant that will be. So this is all being done in nominal terms. So we, we're increasing it by 2.5% a year. So we're actually seeing this in nominal terms as far as that increase in value using that 2.5% there. Perfect, so that's great. So uh, that's that done. We'll pop that in there. So state pension, that looks nice. And then let's chuck in a defined benefit. So um, Mr. Pickles has got a defined benefit pension, so we'll pop that in there as well. And we'll have that payable from, let's go for a 65, and if we've got so let's start with £5,000 a year to find benefit pension. It's going to be payable to Mr. Pickles for the rest of his life. It's a guaranteed pension. We know where it is. What we need to do with this is we're not going to increase it by 2.5% a year. We're just going to increase it by, uh, let's say we'll increase it by 2% uh, a year. So we'll start building out our assumptions. And we're going to use CPI inflation rate. You can use whatever fee you like, but as long as it's sort of reasonable and reasoned, and 2% is the figure that the FCA prescribes. So 2% inflation rate. So we're going to increase this by 2% per year. So again, very, very simple. Um, just our equal sign, grab the cell above it, and then we're going to times that um, by open brackets, one plus our rate of return, which actually in this case is going to be CPI inflation and then close brackets. Now, what will have I forgotten to do there, which is to go back and I need to make sure, because if I try and drag that down again, it's gonna grab the cell below it. So we need to put that letter in dollar signs, like flow, there we go. And so we can just grab this and this will increase it by 2% every single year, all the way through to age 99, like so. And hopefully that looks logical as far as the numbers are concerned. Now, next, what is useful is basically we can just uh, do a guaranteed income column. So uh, we know what the total guaranteed level of income that is coming in. And it makes it a nice, simple uh, calculation. We're literally going to do that plus that and we can just pull that down. What's key next is that we actually think about, well, actually how much income, what's our income requirement? So we know these are all guaranteed. These are kicking in at these, these various ages. So we can build in our income requirement. Let's say he's wanting to try age 63. If our income requirement right now is, let's say 25,000 pounds, if we're then going to do have that income in three years time, then actually and we want to adjust it for inflation to know what that level of income would be in three years time, then we need to increase that by inflation for those three years. So again, we've got similar calculations going on here. So we need to work out, well, that's our starting level of income, 25,000 um, pounds. What would our starting income uh, be in uh, at age 63? So we need to do equals. We're gonna grab that above it there. And again, it's this very, very simple, straightforward calculation. Uh, we've got to obviously times that 
open bracket, one plus our rate of return. So we're going to do this by 2% inflation. Close bracket, and we need to know what it's going to be in three years' time. So we need to then do to the power of, and we're going to go three, because it's three years. Let's just tidy this up a bit. So 26,530 and 20 pence in three years time. So we can drop that into our age 63 box right there. So uh, equals that. So again, if we amend any of these numbers, the inflation rate, this obviously will have an impact on your other numbers as well. So that's the key part of all of this is that you can move things around to see the impact that uh, changing inflation rates have changing growth rates, which we'll look at later, um, will will have an impact on. Uh, let's just box this all off to sort of tidy it up a bit. And again, we're going to drag this down. So we need to then increase this by 2% a year. So if we uh, recall how to do that, hopefully um, we do. So you just grab that there, times, and then uh, open brackets, 1 plus our rate of return, 2%. Close brackets, bosh. But remember, we can't just leave it like that because if we try and drag it down again, we need to put in our dollar signs either side of that letter. And we can drag that income requirement down. And you'll see that impact of that inflation over the years as well. So it's really powerful stuff to look at visually to see um, what, what, what happens. So. We've now got the crucial point of building in our flexible income. So we need to get an idea of how much flexible income we're going to need. If we've got, we've got our no ones as far as our guaranteed levels of income, and we've got our income requirement, how much income we actually want to get from our pots, well, how much do we actually need to take flexibly then to be able to meet that? This is gonna be relatively straightforward. If you think about it, all we need to do is do an equation for um, our income requirement minus our guaranteed income. So clearly the deficit obviously in the first year is going to be 26,530. In the second year, 27,000. And then we can again, just pull that all the way down to see what that deficit looks like. So we'll see what happens when that state pension kicks in, our, our the amount being drawn on our flexible income obviously reduces. Let's also add in some contributions. So this helps obviously if we're looking at sort of the accumulation stage, uh, if you like. So uh, let's just extend this out a little bit. It's a bit better. Um, so let's pop in some contributions in those earlier years. We'll pop in, let's do 10,000 pounds. We're just gonna keep it relative, nice and straightforward and simple, 10,000 pounds a year. You could obviously index these as well if you wanted to, to increase them uh, using the same absolutely same maths as before. And then we've got no, obviously we start drawing down, so we've got no contributions going in beyond that time there. Down to age 99 again. Now, we're going to start to really look at stress testing this and modeling this out as far as actually what impact does this have on our capital. So the capital could be a pension. We're looking at a gross model here as well. So we're not taking off any tax. We're assuming we're taking out gross amounts from the capital that we've got. So this is all about seeing the longevity, the sustainability of that pot. So we're looking at gross amounts. So to then extract, you would need to do a calculation to effectively work out what the, the net amount you would get or obtain. So you kind of need to reverse engineer it to work out what gross amount you need to take out to get your net income. So let's look at, uh, let's just in, add some columns in here for us. So we're going to do, let's do capital, and we're gonna do a low growth rate, capital, and we'll do a mid, and then we'll do a capital, and we'll do a high growth rate. So we'll pop in down in our assumptions table. Again, super useful to do. Uh, let's do our low return. And we're gonna go super low. So this is part of the stress testing of it. If we're going to look at 
a linear, very, very low level of return over a very long period of time, it will give us a sense of actually the sustainability again of that pot of money based on this low level of return, based on what we're taking out of it. So we're going to build in uh, a 1%, uh, 1 percentage in there, uh, growth rate on our capital for the low return. And let's do the mid, we'll do mid return at, uh, let's do that at 4%. And we'll do our, let's do our high return. At 7%. And make it all nice and boxed off as well. So we've got our rates of return. So actually, it's just, I'm just going to fold this up just to make it look a bit nicer. Uh, so yeah, assumptions there. So one, four, and seven, low at one, uh, mid at four percent a year net return. So we, we really want to think about what what's a sensible, reasonable, and reasoned uh, rate of return over the course um, of this uh, of this of this model. So we'll start with one, four, and seven, and. Obviously, if you um, change these, then it will impact on your numbers in these as well. So let's start off with, we need to get to a capital level. Let's assume in the pot we've got, uh, let's go with 300 and, uh, 350,000. This is our most complicated formula in the entire spreadsheet because we're bringing together really a number of different factors. But if you think uh, of what it is you're actually trying to achieve, then it, it makes sense, but but the formula will look quite long and complicated once it's it's finished. So if we just start with this, so we're going to grab our capital, which is the three hundred and fifty thousand starting capital. Well, what do we need to do? With that well, we need to take away the flexible income that's being drawn out at the moment. That's obviously zero, but obviously that will change uh, in the future. Um, and if we just pop that into, we'll pop that into uh, brackets. So we'll open and close brackets there. So it's going to do that part of the equation formula first. And then we're going to times it as we've always done before, and then open brackets, and we're going to go one plus, getting to put the dollar signs in, we're going to put the dollar signs in straight away. So we've got dollar sign, dollar signs either side of our letter there. And then we can close brackets that. And we also need to add in so we've also got our contribution going in as well. So we need to add that in, which is just a simple plus. Add in our contribution there. This is our original capital. Um, having the flexible income being taken out, currently zero. Um, growing at 1% a year um, with a 10,000 pound contribution going in as well. So hopefully that should all make sense and say it's all on the screen there so you can just copy that but hopefully it should make logical sense as to, to what it is you're doing so you can amend that and, and change it as you need to so then what we need to do is we actually need to make sure this can't go to zero because in effect if you're drawing down on the pension plan and it gets to the point where you're taking out uh, you've taken out all the money you can't go negative you can't go into minus territory which obviously this is what would happen as the formula stands at the moment so what we have to do is we have to put a, a max in there. So we have to put a maximum level <clears throat> that it can drop to, which is going to be zero. So that's max, type in max in there, open bracket, zero, little uh, comma, and, uh, and then we need to make sure we pop a close bracket for the entire formula at the end there. So we should be at a point where we cannot go, if we drag this down, let's see what the impact is, do, 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 all the way down to 99, and we know, uh, so at age 96, which to be fair is beyond a typical life expectancy. Uh, so have to see how Mr. Pickles gets on. And beyond that age, so 96, basically the pot runs out at that growth rate. So we're going to do exactly the same formula for the mid and the high as well. What I would suggest is you don't just drag it over, but you type it all out. I know it's a bit arduous, but again, once this is built, it's built. So um, it, again, it's really, really useful to be able to just uh, do the formula as you would do. So I'll just crack on and do that. So that's equals minus flexible income 
Let's stick it into brackets. And we're going to times that by open brackets one plus, and we're going to use the mid rate of return, <coughs> close brackets. Make sure we put our dollar signs in. And we need to make sure we add in our contribution. And then we need to max that as well. So max, open bracket, zero, comma, and then all the way to the end and make sure you just close it off. Bosh, there we go. So 374,000 at the mid rate Let's just check that looks, yeah, it's 4%. It's great. And we can, again, just drag that down. Looks pretty good. And then we'll do it for the high as well. Minus flexible income. I was like to put the brackets around it now, just so I remember. So we're doing that part of the formula first. Times, open brackets, one plus high rate of return, 7%. Don't forget dollar signs. Close brackets, plus our contribution, 10,000 pounds. Just close this off now, actually, while I remember. Then we can go at the front here of the formula and we're going to go max open brackets zero bosh bosh and we'll just pop that into currency as well make it a bit neater again just drag that way down and so we have got now a good table a good indication of what happens to our to our capital based on all of these factors if we're needing to draw a flexible level of income out at this rate, and we've got rates of growth at a low, mid, and high rate of return. So if you're still with me, then massive congratulations for lasting this long and this far. What we'll do next is, well, actually, uh, I would suggest having some sort of break. Um, I'm, I'm getting a bit of a t twining's finest going on there, a nice cup of Vassam. We will actually make a chart and a graph of this. So what we're gonna do is just grab the data that we want, which is, state pension to find benefit pension. Now be careful not to drag it down too low. You only want to select the data you need. Use control to then grab your other data, which we're going to go for is flexible income, contributions, capital high, capital low, capital mid, and just grab all of that as well. Again, be really careful not to grab more, more than that. Uh, you don't need any more than that. Uh, let's do that like that, that works. Um, and we're going to insert and go to insert combo chart, custom combo chart. So insert um, combo chart, create combo chart. And we'll, this chart here, obviously a bit of a mess at the moment. We've only got a capital on the left-hand side. We need a second axis, which is what we'll do here. So click that. So that'll put our second axis in. So we'll see our income level there. And we then need to change, so we've got our capital low, capital mid, capital high, that's all fine, that's lines, but actually we want this to be um, stacked. So stacked column uh, for these, for this data here, stacked column, stacked column, and stacked column as well. And that should be it. So make sure you just tick your second axis for the state pension, defined benefit pension and flexible uh, income as well. And then obviously stacked columns and then lines for those. And then you can stand out, you can give you a little charter title, whatever it might be, retirement income, mid, or sorry, low, mid, high, whatever you like to do. And, and then we can part that over to one side. So if we just come out a bit, but clearly you see on our chart, we've got the various income streams coming in. So we're using flexible income in those early years. We then get some defined benefit pension kicking in, and then we've got state pension coming in as well. And obviously that just helps take the pressure off of our capital. And then we've got our 
mid, our low, sorry, mid and high rates of growth as well uh, as represented by those, those lines. Now, next, I just wanna show you a couple, two more things really. Uh, we're gonna look at just stress testing it slightly more. So really that low capital um, uh, example of, of a growth at 1% is, is a bit of a stress test, clearly, because that's gonna be way below uh, what we need as far as the rate of inflation, and we're gonna run out, potentially run out of money a bit sooner than we would like. Now what I wanna do is just uh, yep, stress test, mid growth rate as we've done before. So we've got our 350,000 starting capital. Let's use our mid, we'll use our mid growth rate. So 4% net return per year and use the same formula that we've been doing before. Don't forget your dollar signs. Um, and then plus our contribution. So that's our mid, and obviously don't forget to max it out. Max, uh, open bracket, zero, and, and close it off as well at the end. As such, there we go. And we will then just drag that down. So this should be the same as our mid rate, 618,000. Kind of need to think about logically what historically has happened in terms of markets. Now you could put in here if you wanted to, and adapt these four real rates of return that have happened historically, or we could do uh, a, a stock market event every so often. So let's take an example. Let's do a market decline every um, 10 years. So if we're going to do that, what we would do is we would very straightforward, it would literally just be taking out our data there and we're going to times it by 0.81%. Why 0.81%? Well, that would be a 19% stock market decline. And you see what happens is we are obviously it's growing by our mid rate and then bang, we get hit with a stock market decline and then it continues to grow at our 4% rate again. So let's roll it forward another, let's grab another 10 years. Again, just take out that data and we're gonna times it by 0.81%. Again, that's a 19, 19% market decline. So we're timesing it by 0.81, which obviously gives you an effective rate of a 19% stock market decline and let's do again at 30 as well because we're still we're still okay we've had was that two two stock markets so let's make it a third stock market decline of another and we're starting at the point we're going to start to run out of money 30 and let's put it at another 10 years so we've got the stock market decline and then we've got it starting to grow again as it comes out the other side and then another stock market decline in 10 years time. So um, you can play around with these to get a sense of what would have to occur to, to really have an impact as far as the sustainability of this pot of money. Um, but again, it's, it's trying to keep it in a sense of being realistic. Then lastly, I just wanna show you, which is really cool, this is capacity for loss. But what we're really trying to ascertain here is What's the starting level? Based on that, that mid rate of growth, what's the starting level you can begin with where you run out at where effectively your capital is zero um, at the end of our, our specific term. So you, you can amend the terms and you can amend the, the ending value as well. So we'll use that same calculation again. Uh, we'll use the equals, uh, grab your cell above, and we're taking off, um, our flexible income. It's exactly the same equations that we've done before, times one plus, I'm gonna grab our mid rate, 4%, close that off, and plus our contribution. And then let's not forget to do two things. Dollars in here, oops, dollars and max, open brackets, zero uh, apostrophe, and we need a little close brackets at the end. So we're gonna grab that. So this should be exactly the same again as our mid rate. Let's just check that. 618, 890, 16, correct. 
Perfect. So what we're doing here is we actually just want this figure at the end to be zero. So we've got our capacity for loss column. And now we're going to, if you go to data and you go to what if analysis and then goal seek. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this figure here because we've got um, our cell down here, L42. We want to get this down to zero. And we're going to change cell Two or L2. Let's change that to L2. So what this has really neatly done for us is worked out based on our 4% mid-rate growth, our capital would need, we could basically have £221,000 in there instead of the 350, 221,000 would get us through to age 99 and, and would have zero value there. So we could obviously have a low amount. So we can take this one step further by saying, well, what does this actually mean? We can just create a nice little table down here. Uh, let's call it capacity, oh, capacity for loss and we'll do it in pounds. So our capacity for loss is effectively 128,000 pounds. So based on that mid rate of growth, we could in effect afford to lose 128,000 pounds and we'll still end up in a position where the pot is sustainable. So in effect, what we could say to Mr. Pickles is that he could, and it's gonna be very uncomfortable, but you could afford to lose 37% of his capital at outset and still achieve his objective. Now, you could amend these, this, um, when you go do goal seat, you could amend this to a figure. So if you, let's say you wanted to have 200,000 at a specific point in time, then you could amend that. It would work out what you needed to start with to be able to meet that, that specific objective. And then we can turn these into a chart as well. So uh, let's think we can choose, yep, defined benefit, state pension, pop those in, and we'll do contributions as well, pop that in. And then we'll grab our stress test and capacity for loss as well. We'll have a look at what all of these look like on a on a graph, on a chart. Um, again, create custom combo chart. Put in a secondary axis for those. And then we want to stack them as well. Stack comms for those. And hopefully we should get a nice little looking chart. Contributions going in, then we've got our stress test, a wiggly line stress test, ups and downs, um, and, and building in those 19% stock market declines as well. So we can just zoom out, pop that in with our other chart, zoom back in. Let's just have a look at the the the, the data. So you've built something pretty substantial here. Adapt anything on here in terms of growth rates or inflation rates, it impacts all of your other data in the spreadsheet as well. One thing to be mindful of, if you change anything on here, your capacity loss won't get adjusted. You have to go back in, and as a reminder, you have to go back in and, and just amend that via the what if analysis and just adapt it according to what it is you're wanting to achieve from it. So if you want to achieve that zero figure again and you adapt, change anything in here at all, you would need to go back and amend this. But everything else, as far as the chart is concerned, as far as your spreadsheet is concerned, will get adapted alongside it as well. So obviously you can build this out further so you could go for a far longer age. You can start this from your 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever it is, there is no really restrictions around that as far as how far you build this out. Uh, because obviously you can have that accumulation phase and then build in the deaccumulation phase. Just bear in mind, obviously it's all projections uh, and, and the longer obviously we look at this as far as a piece of data, as far as projecting out, the less accurate it becomes. And as I said before, as soon as you create this and make this, it will be inaccurate. But at the same time, it is a fantastic way of stress testing, of looking at the impact of growth rates on the sustainability of a pot of money and where you're drawing those various incomes from and where you might need to make up that difference or shortfall from. I hope you found that really, really useful. Please do let me know in the comments below how you get on. I'll be really interested to know. Thanks so much.